All right, music fans, welcome back. Harmless Dave here, talking real music in real time for a few real people out there, just like you, just like me. Um, I posted a song from this band over on uh, my Patreon page, which again, if you want to join, it's a dollar a month, two bucks a month. Uh, if you want to find me, have a conversation, a civil, decent conversation, Patreon, that's a place to go. I will have a link in the description of this video as to how you could join Patreon. This is Memoria Avenue, and they came out a couple years ago with this album, and it flew under my radar to some extent because there was so much stuff coming out at that time that I lumped this in with everything else, and it did finish in my top 20 for the year. Um, some people tell me this has a journey vibe to it. Um, it's really got its own sound, but it's very easy to listen to. Um, there's a lot of detail here as far as production and the songwriting. Everything here is right in line with that stuff we used to listen to back uh, mainly in the 1980s. Because, yes, they use keyboards, lots of keyboards, which I like. So Memoria Avenue, another band from Sweden. So uh, check it out. If you don't like it, I get it. Vocally, the singer is a little, you know, he's different. He he needs a little getting used to. It's not Steve Perry, okay? <laughs> um, speaking of Steve Perry, uh, he's going to be uh, doing this duet. I'm pretty sure it's already been recorded. It's in the can. The album itself comes out, I believe, in November. Uh, he's doing this duet with Dolly Parton and... I think it's cool, and I'm very interested in hearing it. However, I haven't been all that impressed thus far with the Dolly Parton rock star rock album. A couple of tracks came out, and I listened to them, and Dolly has the definitive female country singer voice. She just does. And I think these songs are not out of her range per se but her persona all right where she did cross over uh onto the pop charts years ago and she's been on christian radio fairly recently but with a guy who uh sounds a bit country and that would be zach williams and i think that worked really well um i think she was also on another album by this band called for king and country and I don't think she sounded good on that at all. Uh, for King and Country is like a Tears for Fears kind of band. Um, two guys, and they use a lot of keyboards, and they use a lot of modern rock effects to you know, make their music uh, fit into that uh, Christian radio format. And I don't think she sounded good on that at all, but she sounded great on the Zach Williams tune because that's her wheelhouse. That's where... She's uh, made her living over how many decades, right? So the bad news, <laughs> this is bad news. Um, she's going to be doing Freebird, okay? Leonard Skinner's Freebird. And she's also going to be doing uh, a version of Stairway to Heaven. Now, some details about her version of Freebird have come out. Um, and here's uh, the article. I'll just... Uh, read a little bit of this. Dolly Parton has revealed how she was able to use the voice of late Leonard Skinner singer Ronnie Van Zant in her cover of the band's Freebird. Parton's rendition of the classic track is featured on her upcoming album Rockstar. In a conversation uh, recently, the iconic country singer explained how she was able to use Van Zant's vocals in her cover. She says that song really has a history to it yeah just a little bit um she says we lost a couple of the guys right after i recorded it uh now i'm thinking she's talking about gary rosington who died in march i don't know where the other guy she's talking about was but um anyway then ronnie van zant's widow allowed us to use his voice on our record um man i just I would have said no, <laughs> like, no, no. Look, um, and so what's wrong with Johnny? 
Johnny's the current singer in Skinner, so why not get Johnny out there to use... Look, this is where I think this stuff is wrong, okay? I understand what the Beatles are doing, and yes, somebody told me it's not AI. They've isolated vocals for both John and George. They've got a new song coming out. Ringo says it's going to be the last Beatles song ever. We'll see. Seriously, we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Um, in this case, you're asking for a vocal. Now, this could be a vocal that maybe was on an outtake version. I'm hoping it's not the same vocal that's on the studio version of Freebird. I, I mean, it might be interesting to hear something different, maybe isolated from a live performance, because um, I believe they have the technology now to just eliminate all the noise and just get the voice out of there and, uh, you know, put it up next to Dolly's voice. I just think the whole let's do Freebird idea is is a bad idea. I just, I don't like it. Uh, same with Stairway to Heaven. Um, she even mentions in this article that people told me not to do these songs, but here I am doing these songs. And I guess if you want to, like, look at the car wreck, you know, you're, and I'm not saying these are going to be car wrecks. I'm just saying this is just publicity, I think. Hey, she's doing Freebird. Now, again, country music, southern rock. Yeah, okay. Um, but Freebird, that's its own thing, all right? You can certainly trace it to southern rock. I don't know how much country music is in Freebird. I guess you could twang it up if you wanted to and and kind of change up the song. Maybe that's what they're going to do. Maybe they're going to change it up. But if they're using Ronnie's vocal, unless they're going to change Ronnie up, like his tempo and his cadence and, and all that stuff, um, you're probably going to hear just a straight up normal, I've heard this before, version of Freebird. Okay? I, I don't like this. I don't, maybe there's some money to be made and, you know, Ronnie's widow says, okay, yeah, you can use the voice, but this is how much money it's going to cost. There's no mention of her getting a stipend of any kind, but I would think if she's going to allow Dolly Parton to use this vocal that, you know, there'd be some money exchanged in this transaction. Um, with Johnny still alive, obviously, and uh, he's the current singer of Leonard Skinner, uh, has been so, I believe, since, what, 1987 or something like that? Um, wh why not just get Johnny? I think it would be better for Skinner uh, because that's who their vocalist is. Now, I've made it clear on this channel that um, Ronnie Van Zant was so much better a singer than either one of his brothers, either Donnie or Johnny. I know it gets confusing, right? Johnny, Donnie. Imagine what dinner was like in the Van Zant household. Hey, uh, Ani, what? Is it Ronnie or Johnny? Or is it Donnie? I mean, who's supposed to come to dinner? I just all you guys, just put a consonant on the front of it and uh, we'll make it into a name. Um, it's just, it must have been a little bit you know, stressful for their mother, you know, uh, calling one and getting the other one to show up. Um, so Ronnie Van Zant's widow allowed that, and she says, I was so happy we got to use his real voice. They just dropped it in, uh, in a way they manipulate those things now. <laughs> what? She says they manipulated it. So that's a little bit of the needle sliding off the record. They just dropped it in, in the way they manipulate those things now. So Dolly didn't do anything. <laughs> Dolly sung her part, and then they dropped Ronnie's stuff in. Um, she says she gets chills every time she hears it. I'd already sung my version. There you go. And I didn't know his voice enough. But then our phrasing turned out to be almost just like we were there singing together on the song. That's such a classic, and it just goes on forever. Lord, it's a 10-minute song. At least five or six minutes is guitar. I remember getting so lost in the music, just singing 
wherever I felt it. Uh Uh-oh. Did she start Dolly Parton? Does uh, some scatting uh, during Freebird. I just, uh, folks, I know I'm a curmudgeon, right? Everybody says, you're just an old curmudgeon. You, you know, you should be celebrating. This keeps rock alive. No, this is just a novelty thing. She did this rock album because she got inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Um, if I want to hear Freebird, which by the way, I don't. I don't want to hear Freebird. I would like to hear some other Leonard Skinner songs. You know? Ballad of Curtis Lowe. Something different. <laughs> Put something different on the radio that we're not hearing every 30 seconds. Put I Know a Little. Put something, I mean, the classic rock palette, the landscape, used to be very broad. Because in the classic rock world, people valued albums. They didn't value singles as much as they valued albums. And the DJs used to have discretion. They used to be able to play deeper tracks. And sometimes those deeper tracks would catch on, you know? And uh, in the case of Leonard Skinner, the focus testing is outrageous. And so we're going to just go back to the old standby here. And look, if she had done a deep cut, everybody would have been like, what's that song? Why didn't she do Sweet Home Alabama? She could have done Sweet Home Alabama, right? Freebird? <laughs> I think I think her voice would have probably been better for Sweet Home Alabama. I think that's got more of a country swagger to it than Freebird. Freebird's almost like a southern rock power ballad with a ton of guitar at the end, like she says here. Um, anyway... Rockstar will be released November 17th, so they're really milking this. In addition to the Skinnerd cover, the album features Dolly Parton collaborating with some of the biggest names in rock. Paul McCartney, Ringo Starr, Peter Frampton, Steve Perry, Ann Wilson, we've heard that already, Stevie Nicks, John Fogarty, Elton John, and Joan Jett are among the other collaborators. Now, I think the Dolly Parton-John Fogarty collaboration would be great. I'm not sure about Dolly Parton and Joan Jett. (laughs) Dolly Parton and Stevie Nicks might be okay. Anyway, folks, um, this just, this is, I, I just think with all of the, um, coverage, right? Given to other formats these days, the pop music world, um, the bro country stuff, I mean, Dolly would be better hanging out with somebody in the bro country world or the modern Bud Light country music scene, right? And hanging out with some of those people. And, you know, I think it would be more appropriate, but because, you know, you have to thank again the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame for putting her in. And now we've got this album to deal with. (laughs) And it's getting a lot of attention on classic rock websites. Now, A question for all the classic rock websites, like I always ask, hey, so-and-so has a new album out. Are you guys going to play it? Is it going into the iHeart Radio Beehive? Will it be sent out to all the little worker bee radio stations out there that play the same thing? Pretty much go to the top of the hour, you hear the same song. You're in Toledo or you're in Albuquerque, you're going to hear the same damn song at the top of the hour. That's the world of classic rock today. I know, you know, maybe satellite radio is a solution. I mean, I've heard a couple of those stations and at least there's some variety. Or or you could check out Modern Retro Radio. That's modernretrofm.com. They can be your soundtrack all weekend during this uh, extended holiday weekend. And here's some melodic rock for you. Uh, nothing like uh, Leonard Skinner, that's for sure. This is more like Journey and Foreigner and Toto and stuff like that. Um, it's got its own vibe. This is Memoria Avenue, Memoria. It's kind of a weird word, but that's it. That's the name of the band. So check it out. Uh, we had some folks over on Patreon who uh, were digging that track. I forget which song I put on over there, but it was one of the singles from the album. They're all pretty good. If you put it on and you're thinking which song is the single, 
you won't figure that out because um, the quality is there from start to finish. All right, folks, thanks for watching from start to finish. Again, um, Patreon, if you can help me out, fighting the algorithm, hoping for better days ahead. But in the meantime, I want to thank all the new subscribers who came on board uh, during the month of June, which is thankfully over. I'm just saying it. I'm happy June is over. And uh, we're into July now. So if you want to help the channel out, a buck a month via Patreon, also YouTube memberships for $2.99, um, and occasionally some exclusive content goes over to YouTube members. I do it every so often. I'm not doing it all the time. It has to be a video that I think uh, will obviously get uh, throttled back as far as viewership. And I figured, hey, I will put that out for YouTube members. So if you guys are YouTube members, you might... You must actually like what I'm doing here. Yeah, I would hope so. Anyway, folks, I'm rambling, so I got to go. And uh, have a great day. I'll be back soon, so stay tuned.